carnivore diets often uh, offered as a, as a alternative where autoimmune, some really frustrating autoimmune conditions yeah. occur. Has that been your experience, Paul? Well, look, at the root cause of autoimmune disease, uh, the traditional teaching in medical school is that it relies on something called molecular mimicry, which is basically where the immune system gets confused between the molecular signature on, uh, on a cell of our own and mistakes it for something that's foreign. And if we actually have a look at what shares some of those similar molecular signatures, basically each cell we have has got this little stalk. It's called a glycoprotein. And it's covered in them and it's a little bit of protein with a little bit of a carbohydrate cap on it. And that the uh, signature on the top of that cap is quite unique to that cell. And it just so happens that some of these dietary lectins that can be found in food, um, especially the plant lectins, can actually share that exact molecular signature with some of the cells in our body. And if we have uh, stomach problems, uh, increased intestinal permeability, more commonly known as leaky gut syndrome, then these lectins, the so plant-based lectins, can actually be absorbed across the gut and actually be exposed to our immune systems where our body can generate this aberrant immune response. Now, ostensibly, it's a reasonable immune response initially because it's perceiving these plant-based lectins as foreign, but unfortunately, if they share that same molecular signature, these, uh, the products of the immune response can then cross-react with our own healthy cells. So... Uh, the, the process is that if we actually remove some of these harmful lectins from our diet, we can actually dampen down uh, the immune response. Now, this doesn't happen overnight. If we have a look at the antibodies after somebody associated with celiac disease, for instance, we know they can still be circulating 18 months after a provocation. And gluten, by the way, is actually a type of lectin. So it doesn't happen overnight, but it does happen and it has been shown to happen. For instance, there have been studies looking at uh, antibody levels against thyroid hormone in females and they have actually been demonstrated to fall after eliminating gluten from the diet. So we're actually right on the cusp now. This is, we're moving away from a purely theoretical construct and we're uh, now starting to see more and more evidence and certainly in my patients in clinic, I've documented in literally dozens and dozens, we actually see falling levels of intestinal inflammation, which is measured by something called fecal culprotectin, and we've witnessed falling levels of antibodies against various tissues. And as you know, traditionally, antibodies have just been thought to just gradually and relentlessly increase with age. And yet, I'm having patients who we're documenting antibody levels falling from pathological levels down to levels within the normal range and even becoming undetectable. So uh, it's uh, once we have this holistic understanding of autoimmune diseases and actually the root cause of them, rather than just thinking about them as something that just happens because of our genetics and because of our environmental exposures, none of which we understand anything about, we can get a whole lot more clued in. And there are some things outside our control, such as infection, that do trigger them. And this too is very understandable because if you recall, I said our cells had these glycoproteins sticking out, identifying them. Well, sometimes they've got a protective buffer on top of them called a sialic acid residue. And that actually, even if you have immune cells or effectors circulating with potential to react to that cell, if you have this sialic acid buffer on top, it basically prevents the immune system from doing that. Well, guess what? If you have certain types of infection, that can actually strip that sialic acid away from the top of the glycoprotein. And we know that certain infections, such as streptococcus, are renowned for triggering immune reactions. Mm. If you have a look in any medical textbook at the so-called cause of type 1 diabetes, you'll see that infection is listed there near the top. Why is this? Well, it's not so much that the infection actually causes the autoimmune reaction. It's just that it, it's that last straw. 